Huh. Not sure why that invitation said to come here. This is just the dorm basement, designed for bikes to gather dust and storage, and I suppose used to host an occasional unsanctioned gathering. Eh, well, we're down here in bike storage, definitely totally staying out of trouble. We're going to cover cycling. That's right, the cycle of oxidation, reduction, and maybe even life. Let's start by taking a look at these two beauties. On the left, we have a rusty bike with an O-shaped tire. That's to remind you of oxidation, since rust is just oxidized iron. This O-shaped tire is being filled with fresh oxygen to remind you that oxidation occurs when a molecule gains bonds to oxygen atoms. In contrast, on the right, we see a bike for sale with a reduced price to symbolize reduction. You can tell this is the reduction bike because its O tires are flat to symbolize that when a molecule loses bonds to oxygen, it's reduced. In addition to looking at oxygen atoms, you can also tell if oxidation or reduction has occurred by looking at the number of bonds to hydrogen atoms. This hydrogen fuel cell battery pack on our reduced bike is there to let you know that the more bonds there are to hydrogen atoms, the more reduced the molecule is. This kind of accounting is most important when comparing saturated and unsaturated fats. The carbon atoms in saturated fats are fully saturated with hydrogen atoms, which makes them more reduced than unsaturated fats. No more hydrogen atoms can be added, so there are single bonds between all the carbons, just like the single crossbar in our reduction bike. In contrast, the carbon atoms in unsaturated fats are connected by double bonds, since they have fewer bonds to hydrogen and are more oxidized. Those double bonds are symbolized by this double crossbar on our oxidation bike. Okay, now that we have a good handle, or handlebar, on how to tell if oxidation or reduction has happened, we need to know how to do these reactions. Let's start with oxidation. Most oxidation reactions you'll see involve chromium oxo reagents. So we've put a shiny chrome basket on our rusty oxidation bike. Pretty much any time you see chromium and oxygen in a reagents formula, you can be sure that it's meant to do oxidation. A few important chromium reagents have sneaky names, though. Don't let PCC for pyridineum chlorochromate and the Jones reagent fool you. They're both based on chromium. The pamphlet for Sketchy U's Python Coding Club and this reader's copy of B. Jones's Diary are in the chrome basket to remind you that PCC and the Jones reagent are chromium oxidants. Now we'll get the party started and cover some of the common oxidation reactions triggered by chromium reagents. A secondary alcohol, symbolized by the two alcoholic drinks this fella is drugging, will give pretty much the same result any time it's oxidized, a ketone. So our double fister is wearing a lovely chrome carbon oxygen ketone key to remind you of this. What about primary alcohols, though? They're more complicated. Let's take a look at these two students to review these two possible paths. Each student is holding one drink to symbolize primary alcohols. If you add any of the normal chromium reagents to a primary alcohol, you're going to end up needing water as the solvent for the reaction, which you can remember by this puddle. The water plays an important role. It makes it possible for a primary alcohol to be oxidized twice, all the way to the carboxylic acid, which we've symbolized, of course, with a cardboard box. In contrast, if you treat your primary alcohol with PCC as your chromium reagent, no water solvent is needed. The result of this water-free reaction is an aldehyde. Al here is sporting his Python Coding Club sweater to remind you of PCC. He's hiding behind his shirt, either because he's shy or to remind you of aldehydes. Speaking of aldehydes, here's another person named Al, who's also hiding. What are the odds? Well, this Al is here to let you know that aldehydes themselves can be oxidized by chromium reagents. As long as some water is around, the product will be a carboxylic acid, like this cardboard box. And again, the puddle is there to remind you that water is needed for this oxidation process. You bet this guy isn't named Jack, since he's in the box. <laughs> hmm. Oh, after all that, we didn't say anything about tertiary alcohols. Well, that's because they don't do much. We've represented tertiary alcohols with the three cans of booze in this unique bicycle. Notice that the bike's wheels are wooden. 
That's because the mead-drinking minstrel who owns this bike is a Renaissance Fair aficionado who prefers antiquated modes of transport. But it's also because tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized, just like no oxygen can get into these tires. Tertiary alcohols don't have a CH bond on the carbon that bears the OH group, so there's nothing at that carbon to oxidize. I don't know about you, but I've had enough hot air and enough oxidation. Let's switch to the dark side of the redox coin, reduction. To do that, we're going to head over to the dark and spooky Hyderide bike storage locker near the reduction bike. That's because many reduction reactions require hydride reagents. These are reagents that deliver H-, also known as a hydride ion. There are two important hydride reagents for you to know. The first, and less powerful, is sodium borohydride, or NABH4. The second, and more powerful, is lithium aluminum hydride, or LIALH4. This little reminder that bike thieves will be nabbed by the law should help you remember these reagents. Hopefully that spelling also reminds you not to skip your English seminar. Both ketones, represented by this key, and aldehydes, represented by another al hiding, can be reduced by sodium borohydride or lithium aluminum hydride. In both cases, an alcohol, symbolized by this case of beer, will be formed. Finally, this representative of the law from campus security is here to represent that only lithium aluminum hydride is a strong enough reducing agent to reduce carboxylic acids, which by now you probably recognize as this box. He's sipping a cold one on duty to remind you that the final product of this reaction is an alcohol. Well, that lax work ethic sure explains the recent spate of bike thefts on campus, and the unabated underground party. So, let's recap and seek out some more wholesome activity above ground. Oxidation and reduction reactions can be identified if an atom's number of bonds to oxygen changes, or the number of bonds to hydrogen changes. More oxygens means more oxidized, and more hydrogens means more reduced. Most of the reagents for organic oxidation involve chromium oxo compounds, which include PCC and the Jones reagent. Secondary alcohols are oxidized to ketones. Primary alcohols can be oxidized to aldehydes with PCC or carboxylic acids with other chromium reagents and water. Aldehydes themselves can also be oxidized to carboxylic acids as long as water is around. But tertiary alcohols can't be oxidized at all. In terms of reduction, sodium borohydride and lithium aluminum hydride are your go-to reagents. Aldehydes and ketones can be reduced to alcohols using either one. Carboxylic acids, though, can only be reduced with the harsher reagent, lithium aluminum hydride. All right, well, rumor has it the Renaissance Fair is in town, and that sounds much safer than whatever tomfoolery is happening down here. Now, if only security was sleepy enough that I could uh, borrow that wood-wheeled bike. <laughs>